I'm Sam Rinkus uh, with AUEagles.com here with Alexis Dobbs, a 2014 American University graduate and a women's basketball alumni uh, and who has been working as a PA physician's assistant at Cleveland Clinic. Um, so Alexis, thank you so much for joining us. And I know we caught you on a day off, but these past few weeks, couple months really have been quite the roller coaster for you. So how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Um, I'm doing pretty well, you know, staying, staying positive and, you know, just continuing to, you know, go to work as normal and do the best that we can. Mm -hmm. And um, before we kind of get into these last couple months, um, I want to rewind a little bit and talk about your journey. Um, so obviously, like I mentioned before, you graduated from American in 2014. Um, but your history with Cleveland Clinic actually predates that. So can you just talk about your journey um, landing there and then kind of what inspired you to pursue a career as a PA? Sure. Um, so I'm from Cleveland, the uh, suburb outside of Cleveland. Um, and what really started me and introduced me to the PA profession um, was actually through um, a woman who I call my mentor now. Um, it all started when I was in high school. I went to Hathaway Brown School and, um, you know, I injured my knee my senior year. Um, so I went to the Cleveland Clinic to, you know, get it looked at and diagnosed. And who took care of me was actually a physician assistant um, named Pam Koth. And she actually works with the, the clinic still um, over at Hillcrest Hospital. Um, however, but she took great care of me. She introduced me to the profession. I remember leaving the office thinking, I want to be, you know, a PA when I grow up. Um, and she got me back to, you know, playing later on that season and we even won a state championship. So that's kind of what introduced me to the profession. And then from there, I went to AU um, to play basketball. And I was also in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I majored in biology, but I also wanted to do kind of a pre-PA track because um, I knew I wanted to go to PA school. At the time, uh, the, one of the deans that I worked with at AU um, didn't really have a pre-PA track. It was kind of new. They had a, a pre-med track, I mean, even a pre-vet track, I think. Um, so I kind of took it upon myself to make sure I had the classes that I needed to go to PA school once I graduated, all the prerequisite classes. So that's what I did. And I was fortunate enough to get into Tri-C and Cleveland State University PA program. Um, and graduated uh, right out of right out of AU. I went to school there, so uh, I had a lot of rotations at the Cleveland Clinic when I was in physician assistant school. So that's kind of how I got my foot in the door to the Cleveland Clinic, and um, I never left. <laughs> now you mentioned that uh, the woman who was your mentor still works. Have you been able to work alongside of her since since you started at the Cleveland Clinic? I haven't worked directly with her, no. Um, she works over at Hillcrest Hospital. I'm over at Avon Hospital. Okay. Um, but we still have kind of a close friendship to this day. And um, I look at her as my big sister and my mentor. I talk to her, you know, you know, once a, once a week or, or maybe once every two weeks or so. So she still helps me out and kind of guides me. And I'm thankful that I met her to introduce me to this profession. Mm -hmm. um, so now fast forwarding a little bit. Um, you know, we had been hearing about the COVID-19 for, for a while before it really started hitting in the States. Um, but do you remember when you guys at the Cleveland Clinic kind of started seeing your first cases and what those early days were like? You know, it's, it was kind of a gradual progression. You know, you show up to work every day and, you know, we see a lot of, I work in hospital medicine in the inpatient side. So we see a lot of you know, types of diseases and, you know, different patients that come in. So a lot of pneumonia, a lot of heart failure. So it's kind of a fine line between, you know, when we started seeing, you know, patients possibly with the virus and also patients that, you know, otherwise would be coming in for, you know, pneumonia. So um, in the beginning, it was kind of a gradual progression um, where we started to, the Cleveland Clinic was able to adapt the test from the CDC. Uh, that came out and we were able to run, you know, that test at our main campus downtown. So that's when we kind of started, you know, being able to test more patients um, in Northeast Ohio. So at that point, when we started to test patients, um, we started to, you know, see a little bit more patients because we were able to, to diagnose them. But um, in the interim, we were, you know, getting prepared for this as everyone, you know, across the nation is able to watch the news and, you know, taking the recommendations from the CDC 
So we were able to prepare with, you know, making sure we're able to properly put on our, our PPE and, you know, protect um, ourselves as caregivers and also our patients. Yeah. And, you know, do you remember you said it was kind of a progressive thing, but do you remember like one point in particular for you when it kind of dawned on you like, okay, this is going to be not only serious, but long lasting? And around for a while. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, there was a point, and my colleagues and I talk about this quite often. There was a point where we were like, you know, we're we're getting meetings once to maybe two times a day. We're you know preparing, um, you know, getting kind of ramping up our our expertise on you know managing these types of patients, whether it be on the nursing floor or the ICU, where we're we're taking. Uh, more steps and more meetings every day um, to try to make sure we're prepared for this. And, you know, a lot of my colleagues have, you know, children and, you know, husbands and wives and so on and so forth. So just the reality of, you know, trying to protect yourself, but also being cognizant of your family. And um, there's a little bit of, you know, fear that goes into it, which is normal. But a lot of us were mostly excited to be kind of helping, you know, with mm -hmm. such a pandemic that none of us ever kind of predicted or saw that we'd be involved in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, pursuing a career in the healthcare industry, obviously you're, you're going into it knowing that you wanna help people, but this being a whole kind of new area of it, um, you know, how has that been for you kind of taking on a challenge that not many people have ever had to face? Yeah, it's it's been different. Um, it's been an adjustment, but mostly it's it's been a positive. I mean, our our hospital and the Cleveland Clinic itself has has done a great job preparing us to the point where we feel comfortable and prepared as much as we can. Um, the morale at the hospital has been pretty great. We feel even more so like a family than ever before. Um, you know, I, I work at Avon Hospital, which is a small community hospital. Um, with about 126 beds. So we all caregivers, you know, nurses, physical therapists, doctors, uh, nurse practitioners and PAs, we all, you know, work together closely and know each other, um, you know, more so than maybe a bigger hospital. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of been sticking together, um, you know, and, and doing things like that to keep the morale high. And can you take us just real quick through like a day to day for you? Um, you know, obviously, you mentioned the equipment thing, and even like, going home and kind of your process there, what, what does your day-to-day -day day look like? So day-to-day, -day, I would say it starts off kind of with reality. We, we get temperature checks when we walk through the door before we enter the hospital. Um, every caregiver will get their temperature checked to make sure that they, they don't have a fever um, to cut another layer of safety. Um, and then we kind of go in and go about our normal day, you know, where we would see patients and, and everything like that. Um, I think the biggest, you know, difference is our, our hospital and many other hospitals have kind of focused on, um, you know, cohorting these COVID patients. So, you know, sometimes I will be working on the, the COVID unit um, where we get, you know, possible, you know, COVID patients or those diagnosed, but, um, you know, I think that's kind of the main difference is, you know, when you're in that unit, it's a little bit more focused. Mm -hmm. And um, you kind of already mentioned this, but, um, you know, that family aspect of, of the hospital and, and what you've been seeing, can you kind of expand on, on the atmosphere that you see um, around you when you're at work? Yeah, um, you know, it's during a time like this, I think it's important that we all, you know, stick together and keep things positive positive. So even little things like signs, we, there's, you know, when we go into the employee entrance, there's a walkway and there are signs kind of lining the, the sidewalk, you know, supporting caregivers and saying, you're our hero and, you know, things like that, little things that kind of help when you walk in the door to know that you're not alone in this and um, we're all together. There's also caregiver stations, you know, where we might get uh, water or a snack or something throughout the day um, to kind of just little things to keep us together. Mm -hmm. And um, you see online a lot, especially on social media, kind of these little moments that are bringing a little light into it. Um, have you had any of those kind of little inspirational moments or things that you guys do with the patients or each other um, that kind of gives you some positives? during the day. Yeah, 
yeah, I think, um, you know, there's been instances where I've been able to be a part of maybe a, a, a video, um, you know, conference with a patient and their family members, um, you know, given the circumstances, uh, visitation policies have been, you know, cut back, um, you know, to where maybe there's a, another a uh, family member able to come in to see the patient if it's a child or, you know, for a labor and delivery. And, but otherwise, you know, at our hospital, we, um, you know, it's mostly for people who are in threatening life or death situations. So most of these patients, unfortunately, don't, you know, have their family member or friend there um, in their room with them, which is very hard, um, especially when you're in the hospital kind of you know, in a, in a room by yourself. Um, so, you know, we try our best to make sure that, you know, patients feel comfortable and um, sometimes evil, even doing um, kind of a FaceTime and kind of setting that up for them so that they can able um, to chat and see their family members. So I was fortunate to actually be a part of, you know, one of those with a patient that I had. And, um, you know, it was a patient that didn't have a, a smartphone at all. So um, kind of unfamiliar with, you know, FaceTime and everything like that. So it was pretty, it was pretty cool to see, um, you know, her see her family members on the other side. And we actually surprised her. She was very happy to see her, her family. Yeah, I'm sure some of those get probably pretty emotional when they get to see their family. Definitely. It was, it was very touching. Um, you know, she, she was almost brought to tears because um, we were surprised her. She had no clue that she'd be able to see them. Um, and it, it had been a couple of days, so it's hard to be in there, you know, by yourself. So we try to do little things like that. So, you know, there's obviously an emotional and, and mental, physical toll on the patients. But for you guys as well, um, the long hours and everything that you have to go through, um, kind of what has that impacted you at all? And kind of what have you done to, to manage all of that? Um, I've had a, a great support system, not only at Avon Hospital, but also my, you know, close friends and, and family and my fiance has, um, you know, taken, taken the brunt of, you know, supporting me. So, um, I, I appreciate everything that everyone's, you know, done and, um, it's, you know, I think the hardest part for everyone that's been, it's been hard is kind of the social distancing and you know staying at home with the stay at home order that's in Ohio and also other states um, I think that you know it gets hard for everyone so I think you know going to work it actually is uh, kind of sounds a little bit odd but it's actually kind of where I socialize the most and I get to see you know my colleagues and friends and we get to do something kind of great for uh, the Cleveland Clinic and great for everyone with fighting this coronavirus mm. And, um, you know, kind of taking things back to AU and your experience there, do you think your time as a student athlete, um, because you were, you were a three-time captain, right? And you were a three-time Patriot League Scholar Athlete of the Year. Is that all correct? Yes. So do you think kind of going through that experience and obviously the success that you had with all of that has um, had given you kind of an extra advantage in, in dealing with a situation like this? I think being a student athlete definitely has um, helped me kind of with my career in general, but especially now during, um, you know, more difficult times because it, it, the mental part of it, I think more than anything prepares you, um, you know, to, to stick to, you know, your guidelines and stick to everything that, you know, is within your control and then, you know, just doing your best and working your hardest um, when you're needed the most. So I think a student athlete, um, the whole four years prepares you for that and prepares you for, you know, life after college. Mm -hmm. And have you heard, you talked about your community earlier, have you heard a lot from like your old teammates and the coaching staff and stuff um, who know what you're doing and have reached out? Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was able to talk to Nikki, uh, who's on the women's basketball staff, which was very nice to hear from her and just asked how I was doing and um, teammates and everything in the past you know, check in and just, you know, a quick thank you or, you know, thinking about you um, has been great. Um, just to know that, you know, people out there do re recognize, you know, what's going on and kind of who's involved. Mm. Um, that's it for me. Is there anything else that, that you kind of want to touch on and add? Um, I think just the main thing is, you know, I just like to reiterate everything. I think, you know, we're doing a good job. Um, you know, overall with, you know, staying at home and social distancing um, and just mainly just to keep that up and do what you can um, as, as a citizen, just to do your best to, 
control what you can, which is kind of doing those things that the CDC recommends. So um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much again for joining me and um, thank you for all the work you do and all the healthcare workers out there. Uh, you know, I, I think I speak for everyone when I say that just the work that you guys are doing is, is incredible. We're really appreciative. Um, and yeah, for Alexis, this is Sam Rakus with aweagles.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope to see you again soon.